So we want to create a cylinder for use with a subdivision surface modifier. But first let's talk about the ones Blender provides you with and why they're not really up to the job. Let's delete the default cube and add one. So go to the add menu with shift and A and then mesh and cylinder. And we can see in its properties that uh, it gives you one with 32 vertices, which is quite heavy. Uh, a radius, a depth. The important part here is the cap fill type. And we either get nothing at all, an N-gon or a triangle fan. And if we look at the N-gon version, if we add a subdivision surface modifier to that, we can see, well, that's, that's a mess. It's nothing like a cylinder, so that's uh, no good to us. What about the triangle fan? Let's add another one, but this time we'll choose triangle fan. And then we can see it's got this uh, single vertex and all of these triangles, so I don't have high hopes when we add a subdivision surface modifier. No, it's, uh, it's a little better, but it's still absolutely no good to us at all. We definitely need to make a new one. Now this is the easiest of the primitives to fix, but we can make some really good discoveries here about how subdivision surface models work. So let's go to the add menu and add another cylinder. This time it's easier to work with the end gone, strangely, so we'll start with that. This time we want to change the vertices to eight. Now one thing you might have noticed is that the vertices at the very top of and, and bottom of our cylinder are all three spoked poles. And we don't ever want to have three spoked poles on a corner or an edge. So our first job is to move those away from that edge. If we select the top and the bottom face, we can press I to inset those. And that allows us to move these new edges in and out. I normally like to start with 0.1, which is kind of 10%. 10% is a good place to start when thinking about curvature. So that's where I generally start. Now we'll see that on our corners, we have four spoked poles. That means that curvature is going to flow over there correctly. If I go to edge select mode, I can select this. And this loop here is going to be one of the loops which controls our curvature. I just go back to face select mode and make sure that both of these are selected again. So we're doing everything at the same time. Now we can inset again and press well, 0.5 this time just to push it a, a distance away. And now we can see we have all of this area along which to slide our control loop. Now we don't want this face in the middle, it's an end gone, so it's got to go, so we just press delete faces, and that should delete the top and bottom. Now if we go to edge select mode and select the inner loop, we can go to face and grid fill, and that perfectly fills that in with quads. Now I normally like to rotate them and keep them aligned with the axes, so we can just use offset here and move it around by one, and that flicks around this cross to match up perfectly. You don't have to do that, it's just something I like to do to keep everything neat. And then we've got the bottom and do the same there. Face, grid fill, and again, it needs to be rotated. And that's perfect. What I sometimes like to do is borrow some functionality from the UV system in Blender to uh, highlight my edges. So alt clicking one of the edges to select the entire loop, I can then right click and say mark seam. And that's just some of the functionality that's used to unwrap UV models. But for our purposes, we're just using it to highlight that we have a control loop. Let's do the same at the bottom. So alt click that loop and say mark seam. It's purely a visual aid and we can get rid of this red border at any time. So now we have a control loop on the top. We also need a control loop at the bottom to control the curvature flowing over the top of the model. There are many ways to do this, but the one I normally choose is to go to face select mode and alt click any of these vertical edges running down the cross section. This selects the entire ring of faces around our cross section. I can now press insert, but I can type 0.1, again, giving us kind of a 10% curvature, and I've created two more control loops. So I can mark these again, say mark those seams, just so that we know that the ones in red are our control loops. Now I don't normally like to have two control loops that are holding each other. So what I'll often do at this stage, although it can be deleted later because it's not really doing anything, is to put an extra holding loop in between the two of them and just leave it in place. So that's our cylinder finished. We can now go to object mode and add a subsurface modifier, change it to smooth shading, and we can see that now we have curvature which the subdivision surface modifier works really well with. And we can select any of these red highlighted loops and we don't need to worry about which axis they move along. We can just press GG and they will slide between the areas of safety that we've created for them controlling the curvature over the top. And the same with the ones on the side. So we have full control over our curvature 
It's made from all quads. And most importantly, we've really thought about the idea of an object having a top, a bottom, a cross section, and areas of curvature connecting these things. And that's it for the cylinder. Next, we're going to have a look at the cone. Although what on earth you're modeling with cones, I cannot imagine. 